Washington State, uh, um, Coach Leeds is doing a good job with them. They've won some dramatic football games on the last play and uh, made some um, exciting plays. Their quarterback, um, Luke Falk, makes them go. Um, he makes a lot of great throws. they got ex excellent receivers. It seems like they got glue on their hands on some of their catches. Um, do a great job there. And then defensively, um, they've been very opportunistic and making a lot of plays, very aggressive. Um, Destiny Bahayo, number 97, um, he's a beast inside. Um, he's really hard to block, and he makes a lot of plays. I've um, been very impressed with their um, with their football team and, and what they're doing. So um, we'll play up, head up there to play on ESPN again, which will be a lot of fun. And uh, um, we're excited about going and playing. So I'll take any questions at this time. Coach, last year Washington State was similar to you guys, and they had five losses and one score games. This year they have five wins and one score games. What changed to that? Uh, they've made some plays in the in the, in the final plays of the game. Um, they, um, you know, they I think they scored on the last play of the game. I believe in two or three of the games for sure. And then one of them was like a couple in the last few seconds. Um, they've um, really done a good job of that. And their quarterback has made some good plays. And their um, offensive line and the receivers uh, have been very Im impressed with what they've uh, what they've done. Coach, similar question, but you have an almost identical record to Leach in his first three years trying to rebuild the program. Um, he was asked at his presser this week if he sees similarities in the programs and, and rebuilding, and basically said what I see is that they're playing people close, just like we're playing people close. We're getting some wins in them. But also, they have a new facility, you have a new facility. Do you see a similarity in the, in, in the rebuilding project he's had to do there and what you're doing here? And, and you know, you're always, we're always talking about patience, right? That you were this close, we're this close. Well, it looks like they were this close last year, and now they're starting to win those games. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's it's always different at every school. You have, you know, you have, um, there's different demographics, there's different recruiting areas, kind of, so to speak. There's uh, different academic standards. Um, you're, you play basically in the same conference, but you play different schedules. Um, and so, but I think Mike's done an excellent job there with them. There, you know, you can see his program, what he's trying to do offensively, and then um, defensively, he, he made it. I think he made a change, or they had a change last year, and they're defensively they're doing well. Um, and uh, he's he's um, you know knowing knowing Mike, he he's really funny, um, and uh, he don't always come away that way up to the media, but he's really a funny guy. I mean, he has good personality, and he, he's done a good job there. I, you know, I think you just you just keep working. You set your program in place. You set your culture in place, and then you keep recruiting to it. You keep working and keep watching your team mature to it. Um, and uh, I think that they've um, done that in a lot of ways. Does it look like they turned the corner this year? I think they, you know, definitely they've turned the corner. They they've made some plays. Um, if they if they would have overthrown one of those balls or a couple of them got tipped away, you might not say they turned the corner. And I think that's kind of what he's saying. They're they're close and they've made some of the plays. That's good. And that's a credit to them. Uh, you know, we need to try to, to make some more plays like that in, in some close games. Uh, last week against USC, they had one receiver that had been leading the team by far in yards, and they knew to cover him. This week, uh, Washington State has a lot of receivers that can catch the ball. What's the defense mentality knowing you can't just cover one guy? Well, I think in this system, it all goes back to their trigger man because they're, they're gonna, he's going to throw it to a lot of different guys. He, he does a good job of reading the defenses. <laughs> and uh, the old cliche, the best pass defense is a quarterback on his back. Um, you know, but they, he's hard to get to. Their offensive line does a good job. They get out of their hands quick. But we've got to be able to disrupt the quarterback somehow, some way. If it, you know, coverage wise, pass rush wise, disrupting receivers. But they're a good timing offense. He gets the ball out of his hands quick. Um, so we're going to have to disrupt the quarterback. You know, there were some of the receivers are going to make some of their catches. There's no doubt because they're going to throw it so much. Um, and then we've got to limit them to run after catch uh, type of thing because they'll, they'll take a lot. And then the other thing you got to realize, they're a really good screen throwing team. So a lot of these are to running backs or receivers on short routes. So um, evaluating that with our linemen have to evaluate that because your, your linemen, like, believe it or not, they, they make a lot of plays on those screens. And uh, they have to understand and be able to feel that. So um, you don't, there's not just one guy you have to stop. Um, there's a multitude of guys, but mainly it's number four that you got to kind of slow down somehow. Coach, it never seems that Leach is without a good quarterback, you know, mm -hmm. wherever he stops. 
What's behind that? Is that something that kind of feeds itself and coaches, high school coaches want to send their guys to him or how do you right. view that? Yeah, I, I think, well, number one, he'll, he does a good job of training them. Um, I, I think number two, he's kind of got, you know, they know they're going to come there and throw it, you know, not always, but close to 50, average 50 throws a game probably. Um, and so I think that they um, know that they're going to be able to throw the ball and they can do it. And then, and then he's looking for a certain type of guy to fit their system. Um, and uh, um, I believe his uh, quarterback coach was one of his great quarterbacks at Texas Tech. Um, too, so I think that helps because that, he's been in the system when he's recruiting quarterbacks. He can tell them all about it, how he, all the things he did, and how he coaches them, and understanding the system. So I think that helps him. Like I talked to Cade earlier yeah. today, and I kind of he made the quote yesterday where he said, "The person and player I was at the beginning of the season is not the person and player I am today." And he said he's just matured a lot. Have you been around? Is that a common thing for players to? Sure, in the middle of a season as quickly as apparently he has, or is that kind of unique? I, well, I, I think it's, it's been a process since his freshman year, mm -hmm. um, and then I think he kind of clicked and realized, hey, this is what I have to do if I want to be successful. Um, you know, he has great parents, and they've been behind him all the way, and, and I think he just kind of matured a little bit, and, uh, I, and I think, you know, it's always a process, but I think maybe he kind of finally felt comfortable this is what I do, got in his routines of doing what he needs to do, and um, he's doing well in school, and um, you know, he, he's, he, could, he could be a very good football player. And it's good that he feels that way, and he understands the choices and decisions you make to reflect on everything. Like you mentioned, it's important to get some pressure and make football feel comfortable. He, when I watch him, it looks like he does a pretty good job of not getting uncomfortable. He stays pretty patient in the pocket. So yeah. um, what have you noticed that with him, and um, how – Right, no, he, he's really good. Um, but if it's always a clean pocket, it, I mean, they, he didn't miss anybody, and they catch him and throw him well. Um, you have to kind of muddy the pocket up somehow. You have to kind of muddy up coverages, and um, you can't just sit there and say, we're going to play this. Um, they'll, they'll figure out how to you know, pick it apart with what they're doing. Um, but, no, he is a um, um, very cool in the pocket, um, sits in there to the last second and throws it. Um, you know, he's, I think – they have the, of course, not anything against their offensive line. They throw it so much, they lead the league in sacks. But that's because they throw it so much. You know, there's more opportunities to do that. Um, so teams are able to kind of put their ears back a little bit more. Um, but he does a great job of sitting in there and knowing where to throw it and wait to the last second and getting rid of the ball. Uh, he, he really does a good job of that. He doesn't really throw off, throw off his back foot, which that makes him accurate. So um, he, does a, he, he does good at it. How does the offense change without Seth Um It won't change much. It won't change much. Um, you know, one of the things is, you know, now we have really two quarterbacks, so probably can't run these guys as much. We'll run them at times. There's no doubt about it. But you're kind of thinking in the back of your head, you run them too much, you get another one hurt, you're down to one. Um, so you're kind of in that situation, you know. Um, but uh, it won't change much. Um, we'll do a few things that um, – that uh, Cade likes, and, and you know, if Jordan ends up going in there, we do a thing, few things that Jordan likes. Everybody had, kind of has their strengths, and certain pass patterns they like, or certain pass routes they like. Um, but uh, it won't change as much. It won't be a drastic change. Mike, could you discuss recruiting Cade and what you saw in him in high school? And, and uh, I mean, obviously he's very accurate. You talked about his accuracy. Did you see that in high school? Yeah, he threw for a ton of yards in high school, um, and he did really well. He was extremely accurate. Um, could move in the pocket, and Kay can run. I mean, he can run. Um, he's just not big in stature right now. He's still maturing. Um, and so he would escape out of the pocket and make some nice runs and, you know, off the zone read and some different things that he did at that time in high school. Um, but I think the main thing is he can make he can make every throw, and he can throw it in a tight window. He can throw it deep, and uh, um, he um, has a, a good feel for that in the pocket, has good balance on what he does. Coach? Cade said he felt like his biggest weakness last week was that he didn't have full control over the offense. Can something like that change enough in a week for him to kind of take over the game? Um, well, I, I think you know one of the things that was was hard for Cade is all of a sudden take off your headgear. You're right in the middle of the game against USC, and it's in the heat of battle um, for your first time. I think that was a little bit nerve wracking. I, I tried to calm him down as much as I could, um, but you get out there and those big boys are running at you. It's a little bit tougher. Um, it's easier said than done. Um, and then I think that uh, he, uh, you know, he gets out there and 
it finally started to slow down for him. You always hear people talk about that, but that's the truth. When you first get out there, it's like, what's going on? It started to slow down for him. He started doing it. I think he'll feel more slowed down this week, kind of understanding what's going on and having, you know, understanding being prepared at every rep. You, you tell every guy all the time, you're only one snap away from playing a ton. Um, but until it truly happens in live battle, it's uh, hard to, to, to handle. Coach, how do you feel that your pass rush has been how effective through what 11 games? Um, of course, it's not as good as you want it. You want it. You always want it better. Um, I think we have 24 sacks right now. I believe that's correct. Um, so that's that's good. It's not great. It's not super. It's not terrible. You'd like to have more. Um, and uh, you know, we like to be able to create more pass rush with just four and having to, to bring people. Um, but if that's what you have to do, that's what you have to do. Um, you know, if you bring a lot of people against Washington State with all their screens and all their jailbreak screens, and receivers, running back screens. They can make you pay, so you got to kind of understand how to pick and choose on all of that. Um, and that, you know, I think I think Mike Leach wants you to do that a lot because he can just get it easy. It'll be feast or famine type thing. So um, we need to be able to get there with the guys we have up front and, and, and work from there. Mike, um, talk about Cade's confidence. And I know there at the end of the game on that fourth and six, he tried to take a shot deep, and probably maybe most people would rather him gone with the original play, which would have been something shorter. But I guess for a guy to come in off the bench who hasn't had a lot of playing experience, that sort of speaks to his confidence. Like, I guess you'd rather have a confident player out there willing to take a shot as opposed to maybe someone who's timid who's right. just automatically going right. to check. Yeah, 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 you definitely want a confident guy. It's just like the guy that if, you're, if your point guard in basketball wants to get rid of the ball and not get fouled at the end to have to make the winning foul shot, you want the guy that holds it, get, wants to get fouled. And if he makes it or misses it, that's it. But you want that type of guy. So I, I agree with you. I think that uh, he does have confidence. I think he's very confident in his ability to throw a football wherever he wants to throw it. Obviously, you're going to need a lot of DBs to play in this game. Isaiah Oliver got some extensive playing time last week. How did he grade out in that game? And what have you seen from his development? Um, Isaiah played well. And uh, you know Isaiah's been playing in all our games on special teams and playing some at DB. He'll play at DB quite a bit in this game. Um, and uh, he, he graded out well in the game and played hard. Um, Isaiah is going to be a really, really good football player. You spoke the other night, obviously, in the immediate aftermath of the, the Seppo's injury and how it was emotionally. Could, now it's a few days later. How is he doing? How are his spirits? What kind of conversations um, have you had with him? His spirits are good. He, he's an exceptional young man. We were walking off the field. He was crutching off the field, and I was walking off the field after practice. The day he had met with the uh, foot doctor, and so we were we were discussing uh, everything, the scenario of it, and um, getting back, and, uh, and so we were talking about the time. He looked at me and said, "I'll be back. I'll be back." You know, so um, you know, he, and he had a smile on his face. He wasn't down, and he's been at every practice. He's been at all the meetings. Quarterback, he doesn't miss anything. He wants to be a part of everything. Um, so uh, um, he, he's a great leader, and he's you know, he's helping Kate and Jordan all he can. I don't know if this is a nice step up, but can you? When is his surgery scheduled? Can you tell us that? Um, I, I'm going to get down there. I believe we're going to. I believe it's going to be Friday, but that all differs at times. But I believe it'll be Friday. Like you mentioned, he wants to be a part of everything. Is he going to be able to travel? Not with the surgery Friday. Um, he won't be able to. But to Utah, are you looking? Um, hopefully, if, he, if he's feeling good enough, it just depends <coughs> on how all the recovery goes with it. And how much of a difference is it going to make you think not having him there? Because he's been such an emotional guy. If he can't beat that game, um, you know. well, I mean, it's tough. You know, the hard thing about young men getting injured for the player and the coach and the team is a lot of times they can't go on the trips, and you can only take so many on the trips according to um, Pac-12 and NCAA rules. So when the guy's injured, you got to replace him with somebody. So then you're still sitting in the number. So um, that's kind of how that works. Um, but not having him there. You know, I was, I, honestly, I was thinking about that this morning when I got up. I said, huh, it's going to be kind of weird without Seppo there because he's been in every game that I've ever coached at um, here. So uh, it would be different for me for sure. And just real quick, a couple of the injured guys, uh, Atkins, Jared Coe, and Ryan Moeller, what's their status? Um, uh, Jared Coe will be back. Um, Ryan Moeller will not. Michael Atkins will not. Just a, on Atkins, um, will he play again this year? I don't know. He, you're, you're still trying. Mm -hmm. I know a couple years ago, Mike, we did a story with you on it where you were telling the team to just keep swimming, just keep swimming, yeah. just keep swimming. When a guy like Seppo goes down, 
and you know he's been such a rock back there for your team. I'm sure it was a shock to some people's systems on the sideline. It looked like your team did just keep playing and didn't let it bother them. Did you like the way your team reacted to Seppo going down and having to rally around? Yeah, I, I did. I thought they they didn't bat an eye. They kept going. You know, we had some uh, you know a couple mistakes in the second half that gave USC life, um, but. Um, it wasn't because we weren't playing with energy or playing nervous or didn't believe in the quarterback. I think that they kept playing. Um, I, I sensed the same thing you did because I was kind of watching their eyes to see how it was going. I got in the huddle there before they went out on the field, and I could tell they were all ready to, to do what they needed to do. Any more questions for Coach? Coach, you know? Okay. All right, thank you very much.